Hi, and welcome to the ONF Spotlight on 5G Connected Edge Cloud for Industry 4.0 transformation. I'm Tom and Sloan with the ONF, and today it's my pleasure to welcome Dai Kashiwa, Evangelist Director from NTT Communications. Dai is known for being an advocate for open source and for the application of disaggregation and SDN principles within SDN. And I've worked with Dai for a number of years in the context of ONF, and I'm very pleased to have him here with us today. I'm curious to hear what Dai has to share regarding the latest developments in this space from NTT's perspective. So Dai, welcome and please take it away. For introduction, Taimo. Thank you very much. I, uh, really, I'm really happy to be here to share with you our challenges of softwareization, edge computing from NTT uh, point of view. So let's start uh, my presentation. Yeah, the today title is the uh, softwareization and edge computing platform in NTT. And here is the agenda of my talk. Uh, first, I would like to briefly mention uh, NTT's new concept named ION. ION represents innovative optical and wireless network. It is our R&D strategy to realize a paradigm shift in communication and network infrastructure. The following activities and products are basically aligned with this concept. And the second, I will show you uh, our softwareization challenges. And last, at the last, not least, uh, I will explain about our edge computing platform and the use cases as key enablers to, uh, of the stand, uh, softwareization challenges. Okay, let's move on to the first topic, ION. Uh, is the uh, new concept continuously implementing to 2030s to realize, realize a paradigm shift in communication and network infrastructures? Um, as you know, uh, information, data, and power consumption are increasing exponentially. Uh, for example, um, about the, uh, uh, the amount of information distributed through the internet uh, will reach uh, 190 times from now. And the uh, um, estimation of IT equipment power consumptions reached uh, 12 times uh, within the uh, few decades and so on. Uh, as you uh, imagine, the uh, Moore's Law which states the, that the number of devices mounted uh, on an integrated circuit uh, doubles every one and a half years has reached the limit of the uh, performance improvement with current technologies due to operating frequency and power consumption barriers or something. The limit of performance improvement means that uh, the techno technological progress has stagnated and is becoming difficult for social in infrastructure to continue uh, growing. ION goal is not only to support even greater amounts of information processing, but also to go beyond the limit of uh, com conventional technologies. For example, the development of smart cities requires the analysis of a large amount of video data using data using uh, advanced AIs, as well as many computational capabilities and corresponding increases in power consumption. The connected car solutions require the elimination of uh, computation, communication delays and stable uh, qualities to recognize, judge, and uh, control of the movement of a large number of vehicles instantly. We are challenging to solve these problems by applying optical technologies. ION is uh, targeting low power consumption, maybe a ten, 100 times the uh, power efficiency and high capacity, uh, maybe 125 times the transmission capacity and so on. At ION, we will adopt the uh, photonics based uh, optical technologies, not only to networks, but also to the inside of semiconductors, such as terminals and servers. We have developed photonics fusion technologies by ourselves, uh, including silicon photonics technology to create small optical transceivers and optical to electrical conversions technologies on silicon chips and so on. 
Um, ION has uh, three components. Uh, first one is all photonics networks to significantly improve the potential of information processing infrastructure. The second one is digital twin computing for a world for a new world of services and applications. And the third one is the community foundation to optimally harmonize all IT resources. I have already explained about all photonics networks and we assume there are softwareization, la softwareization layers above these photonics networks to provide various network services in flexible and cloud native way. To orchestrate these hardware and software components, we are making a community foundation orchestrated to, op to harmonize all IT resources. And we believe that digital twin computing will help us to simulate various IT environment conditions and enable us to take suitable proactive countermeasures using AI technologies and so on. So to improve implement ION, we plan to actively adopt open hardware plus software technologies. Uh, in the rest of my presentation, sorry, um, I will uh, focus on the softwareization and open activities and challenges, especially from this uh, services for the enterprise customer point of view. Second uh, topic is uh, softwareization challenges. As you know, infrastructures are becoming uh, flexible and uh, controllable by software through disaggregation, virtualization, and so on. On top of that, various parts, SaaS services have been implemented and provided by service providers like us. Our enterprise customers are uh, starting to make good use of these software components to realizing end-to-end -end IT systems and applications that they need for their business. So some parts are implemented by the customers by themselves, and some parts are provided by service providers as uh, subscription services. The infrastructure and services provided by the service providers will be softwareized and seamlessly integrated into the end-to-end -end IT systems of enterprise customers. As you have already known, disaggregation, virtualization, these kind of softwareization technologies have uh, drastically changed our industry environment. Uh, we assume that our infrastructure in our network, data centers, cloud environment are transforming into a combination of open hardware, uh, network OS and running, network OS running on them, value added functions and controllers and orchestrators control them to control them. We believe that these changes enable us to uh, optimize the uh, automate our operations, the uh, pro pro uh, predictive detection, aut uh, automatic recovery, easy upgrade, flexible configuration changes and so on. So softwareization accelerates, in, accelerates integration of our services with end-to-end -end IT systems of our enterprise customers in cloud-native way. So we have uh, actively joined the open uh, activities, open source activities. The first one is the ODTN, that uh, open disaggregated transport networks project. Uh, that we launched with these partners uh, three years ago, maybe three years ago. Uh, we continue to challenge to disaggregate uh, transport network functions into smaller parts with open standard APIs using common data models. ONF has long and good history of standardization for transport regions, named TAPI, uh, transport APIs, so ODTN is integrating TAPIs as northbound interfaces and open coffee APIs for southbound interfaces and has good progress in implementing OSS controllers of ONAS. And uh, we entity uh, parallelly launched the browser project with uh, of, uh, ODTN named the uh, uh, project in TIP named Candy. 
uh, can be represent a composite architectures for network disaggregation and integration. So Candy's goal is to um, uh, specify the operator use cases for end-to-end -end -end basis and uh, specify the architectures uh, based on open technologies and accelerate techni techno technical development and so on. And the candy is using ODTN outputs in the transport region like this. In this January, uh, we succeeded our first POC with total five carriers, published the white paper and keep con contributing uh, specifying de facto draft in transport networks architecture. Um, again, Candy uh, using ONF ODTN project outputs, including API specifications and the owner's controllers. Thanks to good collaborations and big support of ONF, we have had a good progress in uh, optical uh, transport network disaggregation. As I mentioned before, ION is putting more effort into photonics networks, so we plan to accelerate these efforts and carry over them into ION's the progress. In the radio access networks region, entity Docomo uh, has uh, really uh, active in ORAM project. As our first step, we have adopted open interfaces uh, between RAM equipment. We have achieved a multi-vendor interoperability of a 4G and 5G base station, com base station compatible uh, with ORAN Alliance specifications. And the, for the next step, we are tackling the virtualization of central units and distributed units with reasonable manner, decoupling hardware and software in software with uh, big uh, RAM intelligent controllers. OK, uh, this is the uh, history of NTT. And uh, uh, the, as the last part of my presentation, I will uh, uh explain you about uh, more uh, focusing a more focusing area of socialization activities on edge computing platform uh these are i think that really aligned with onf onf's focus um the uh i'd like to uh, share our practical activities of edge computing and uh, its use cases with you this is the view of our edge computing platform. We have uh, designed a multi-level edge computing platform that include customers on-premise edge, access edge, core edge, and cloud edge. Uh, each level has its own properties of delay time and the number of locations. Uh, Value-added functions are uh, deployed to most suitable edges aligned with their properties. It is a distributed uh, processing platform to run RAM uh, value added functions with optimal loads and environment dynam dynamically in cooperation with high speed and low latency underlay networks. It builds service meshes of value added functions running on distributed multi level environments. And it supports scaling and scale out of uh, value added functions and transfer them to the other environment aligned with the, the learning policies of enterprise users. In our platform, the global controller deploy, monitor, and manage the value-added functions for all edges. That is a centrally managed uh, distributed edge platform and remotely distribute value-added function to specific edge uh, platforms. Based on run edge computing everywhere idea from the cloud edge to the on-premise edge, you can easily build an edge platform by using the global controllers. And uh, in the future, uh, uh, as shown in this figure, we plan to group edges dynamically, uh, deploy the value added functions according to the policy of each group and perform version upgrade automatically and so on. We will apply the network slicing technologies to the network between much level edge platforms so that we can provide the optimum QoE according to the characteristics of the policies of customer traffic. 
Uh, this figure shows the POC that we implemented the last year using standardized technology to map slicing information between the 5G wireless section and the uh, wired backbone network section. Uh, we set up a three level of P uh, uh, slices, uh, MMTC and uh, ULC uh, uh, and uh, EMB. Um, like uh, and so on. As a last step of, of part of my presentation, I will show you some of the use cases uh, uh, utilizing our H H computing platform and the network slices. The first use case is our H, um, the use case of our H computing platform is the provision of NFP services that utilize core edges. Since core edges exist at the traffic hub, where customers' traffic for multi-cloud SaaS is aggregated, the core edges are suitable for providing the value-added functions such as network security, so, uh, traffic control, uh, load balancing, and so on, as NFP services. Uh, this figure shows the image of NFP service, services utilizing core edges. We have uh, already provided connection services that connect multi-cloud and SaaS, named FIC, Flexible Interconnect. And in this case, various, uh, various value added functions are provided at the core edges for the traffic that passes through the FIC. Uh, we, make, uh, we plan to make our uh, echo partners provide their services utilizing our core edge environment that is an open platform to enhance open collaboration. The second use case is a little complicated using on-premise access uh, cloud edges to realize lo local or private 5G connectivities and make mobile edge computing for IoT. Regarding the local or private 5G functions, virtual RAM functions are deployed to the on-premise edges, UPF functions are deployed to the access edges, and 5G functions are deployed to the cloud edges. Uh, we realize uh, a distributed solution and the user plane traffic remains low latency using high speed processing functions at edges. Uh, network slicing between the edges is realized by the uh, uh, slicing technologies, and uh, access edges provide uh, mobile edge computing functions. So we have started evaluating SD RAM and ESA of ONF and we will try to deploy them into this uh, implementation. Okay, the last use case is a connected car, which utilizes access edge and cloud edges. Uh, many current connected car solutions bring all the data, such as driving data, image data, uh, from the cars to the cloud. But in, new, uh, in the new solution, functions such as encryption, decryption, load balancing, and so on. Uh, 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 the uh, mass routing and caching on the access edges process, the upstream up, up data from the cars and work with big data analysis solution on cloud edges. These collaborations will realize low latency, uh, low latency communication, effective infrastructure resources utilization, and dynamic and optimized road communications uh, aligned with the car drive and so on. As a result, it optimizes resource utilization of the entire end-to-end -to -end -to -end connected car IT systems and enhances inter-vehicle communications and information transmission based on a larger amount of data. Okay, let me wrap up my presentation. I, I explained I own uh, concept and our views on softwareization challenges and the importance of the edge computing platform. Then I shared with you uh, the promising use cases, uh, including private local 5G utilizing multi-layered edge environment with the uh, integrated management. These use cases are just a snapshot as of now, and we plan to expand various use cases using our basic softwareized platform in a way of open collaboration. So we, have, we hope we are keeping good collaboration with open communities and accelerate industry's evolution with ONF and communities. Thank you very much.
All right, good. Yeah, thank you, Di. That was uh, terrific, and it's nice to get insight into uh, what NPT is thinking and 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 viewing um, how you're viewing the problem. Uh, I was uh, I noted that um, you know you kind of talked about these three edges, and uh, you know on-prem access edge and core edge. I think you you called them. Um, so, ahead. given NTT structure, I'm I'm curious. Uh, can you share? I mean, is NTT Com looking at at deploying into all three of those edges, or are there other NTT groups? I mean, how how does that um, work for NTT? Okay, okay. Thank you very much for uh, questioning. Yeah, it is a uh, really a uh, little complicated. Yeah, NTT Communications is uh, uh, responsible for uh, the core networks and. Uh, for a big enterprise customers. So we are responsible for core edges and the cloud edges. And mm -hmm. entity Docomo is responsible for a mobile region. So the, um, they also responsible for uh, uh, access edges. And entity East and West is a regional company is responsible for access edges. It's a little mm -hmm. complicated, but uh, we hope uh, we can uh, adopt the st standardization of APIs and data models as much yeah. as possible and uh, uh, drive to uh, uh, manage in integrated manner with global controllers uh, and also this kind of controllers are brought to developed by entity communications mm -hmm. okay good thank you thank you for sharing and uh, that is a nuance of ntt that uh, i was curious about because of, of the edge and the way the edge is interacting with the core and the public cloud mm. so um yeah very good so, um, and so this notion of the global controller that you were describing, um, you're hoping that it's going to help address some of this, you know, kind of cross, uh, cross company uh, division of labor, I guess, with the different pieces. Is that, um, is that the intent? Yes. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, uh, it's a big, very big challenge, I think. Yeah. Uh, the technical uh, uh, collaboration is not so uh, difficult. I think, mm -hmm. but the, uh, but the, uh, for example, how to handle the distributed information, how to handle the uh, the customer information for each enterprise uh, company, uh, this kind of uh, um, operational uh, or company's point of view, the issues are yeah, really big. So, um, from technical view point of view, we plan to adopt the uh, open technologies, APIs, as much as possible. And in parallel, we have to tackle and uh, solve this kind of uh, operational uh, issues. Mm -hmm. Okay, understood. Yeah, thank you for uh, that and sharing. Um, so I'm curious about NTT strategy around the, the public cloud piece. I noticed on one of your slides, you had sort of the, the Amazon, Microsoft, Google Cloud mm -hmm. uh, icons, I think, you know. So um, is NTT also running a cloud or, you know, and, and I, I asking in the context of edge compute and of, um, of this connected edge and that, uh, you know, we're starting to see a movement towards uh, running um, parts of workloads on the edge and then other, you know, other half of the workload in, in the cloud itself, you know, maybe for doing inference at the edge and doing learning mm -hmm. in the and how um, NTT views that and I guess my first question about, you know, what NTT company is kind of running what parts of the network, <laughs> you know, how that works. And then maybe about the public cloud piece, are you, are you kind of in planning to embrace those three cloud providers or is NTT going after that space in some form? Yeah, actually, um, yeah, NTT has, uh, um, NTT is providing our own cloud services named uh, enterprise ECL services. But uh, most of our enterprise customers are using multi-cloud environment. And actually, uh, uh, most of them are using uh, uh, hyperscalers cloud, including AWS, uh, Azure, uh, DCP, and so on. And so mm -hmm. our strategy is a multi-cloud strategy. Uh, so uh, allow our ent enterprise customers to use the uh, 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 multiple uh, cloud environment uh, per customer demand. But mm -hmm. our strength, uh, good uh, strength point is the uh, connectivity of these uh, multi-cloud environment and the value added functions among uh, the, the uh, among the, the 
uh, the, this multi cloud environment. So, and if we or some value added functions for uh, enterprise customers, they are that using the uh, AWS uh, Azure or GCP is a really uh, focusing point for us. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, that makes makes good sense. I think we're all facing um, you know challenges, or the industry is trying to figure this out right now. Uh, you know, I think the average enterprise uses multiple clouds. I heard some number like 2.6 clouds, uh, you know, are kind of actively used by most enterprises. <laughs> so uh, it seems like any any architecture for the edge and for edge cloud needs to embrace a multi-cloud uh, environment. And, um, and we also get the sense that most enterprises don't want to kind of um, get locked in, you know, in, uh, and, yeah, yeah. and one form of lock-in is, is um, kind of being locked into a single cloud provider as well, um, given, you know, the fact that they use multi-cloud today. So, um, yeah, that's going to be really interesting over the next year, how that, how that uh, develops. I'll be really curious uh, to see how NTT continues to pursue that and, um, and, and the rest of the industry as well. No, very good. Well, Di, I, I want to thank you very much for uh, joining us today. Uh, as always, a real pleasure to see you again and uh, and uh, to hear an, an update from NTT. And um, with that, um, I'll say goodbye. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you very much.